good set. Good. We have 10 participants, just, just right. Okay, we're good. Hi, everyone. My name is Francis Queller. I'm really happy that you're here and listening. Um, this is going to be a really great, cozy webinar. We get to learn about UNIS, which is the United Nations School, and specifically uh, UNIS Queens. We are so lucky to have Miss Barbara Kennedy as our presenter, as our guest speaker, and she's going to share information about the school. So I'm beyond happy to tell you that we're here and we're looking forward to a great event. Use this opportunity. You can ask any questions you want and Barbara Kennedy is more than able to answer them. Um, she's been at the school for years. So she's gonna speak more about that and the opportunity as well. I'm really excited that we're here, that we're listening in and thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I, I am aware that there are quite a few events going on today um, in the education circles. And I'm really glad that you're, those of you who are able to make it tonight did make it tonight to this one. So thank you, thank you all for listening. I'm looking forward and Barbara, please take over from this point on. Parents, please type any questions you have into the chat box. Okay, go right ahead. Well, thank you. And thank you, Francis, for um, giving me and Eunice this opportunity to kind of spread the word a little bit about our school. Um, we really are uh, a school that's been around, believe it or not, for over 70 years, the United Nations International School. And we are located in Jamaica States in a very pastoral, uh, lovely neighborhood. We are a small school part of a larger school. Um, you may know Eunice, we have two campuses. We have a Manhattan campus and a Queens campus. Our Manhattan campus is pre-K through high school and our um, Queens campus is kindergarten through grade eight. And to kind of give you a little bit of an introduction, um, I'll, I'm the principal of the school. I've been at the school for, believe it or not, 40 years. I find it hard to even you think about that that time, um, but it's such a wonderful place that it's not the kind of a place that you want to leave. And uh, even for international schools where there's often a turnover of faculty, you'll find that um, Queens and Eunice tends to have people who who stay. So it's really a, a wonderful place. Um, I'm going to screen share to give you a little bit of um, a taste of Queens, and so you can kind of see for yourself. And then please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Uh, to ask and we will uh, be, I'll be happy to answer them. So to kind of give you just a little bit of um, here, I'm gonna move this whiteboard. I don't know why we have the whiteboard. Let's see. We just wanna, I'm gonna stop the share and go there. Okay. And that will take you here. So we are the United Nations International School. We're very proud of our connection to the UN. Um, we are a private school, an independent school, and an international school. We are accredited by the Council of International Schools, which is the most um, prestigious international uh, accreditation association for international schools. We are also a member of NISIS and the International Baccalaureate Organization. Our high school is the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. And I, I can talk a little bit about that if people are interested. Um, there are lots of international schools in the world. There are only two UN international schools. And you'll see um, Eunice, and we have the UN logo, and Eunice Hanoi is the other international school. And I'm just going to uh, close the screen a little bit so you can see. After the Vietnam War, our faculty was sent to go and begin the school in Hanoi. So although there are many schools that claim to be international schools, they are um, not UN international schools. So we're very proud of that. Our mission is really uh, foundational to everything that we do. And it's connected to the mission of the UN and guided by the ideals of the UN. And I think the most important part, missions uh, often tend to be kind of flowery and aspirational, but for us, the, the most important part comes at the end. And it's about students becoming an active force to shape a better world. That's our intention, that's our mission, and we take it very seriously. Why Eunice Queens? So um, if you're looking at schools, and you're here and taking the time to spend with us this evening, you are doing your homework. So why Eunice? Obviously we have a rigorous 
program, challenging academics. We wouldn't be over 70 years if that, that's a given. You know, I, I always laugh when schools put in their mission statements, things like, you know, excellent academics, you know, nobody's going to put mediocre academics. I mean, that's what schools are about. That's what we do. And I think for after 70 years, we do it very well. There's an international perspective that's imbued through our curriculum. We are, as I said, an IBDP school, and we are informed by the IB learner profile, which are the dispositions that we develop as part of developing kids who are global citizens. It's being a risk taker, it's being caring, it's being knowledgeable, it's being balanced, being principled, all of those things, being an inquirer. So we take that international perspective very seriously. There's our UN connection, which you saw in our mission. We are a very tight knit community. The Queens campus is small and it's very much like a family. Um, I'm sure you will, um, if you're looking around in this virtual world, because we're not um, able to bring people in, you've probably been listening to a number of people at open houses and talking about the community. Um, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of admissions people doing these webinars or doing um, virtual open houses and things like that. I'm the principal of the school, and I'm here to tell you when, when people tell you, oh, the principal knows everybody in the school, I know everybody in the school, and I'm here and not our admissions person, because that's the kind of a community we are. We have a wonderful admissions person, and she'll handle all your paperwork, but we all work together, absolutely. Um, we believe in educating the whole child. For us, we are talking about educating global citizens. And that is more than just the academics. It has to do with appreciation of the arts. It has to do with respect for cultures. It has to do with creating kids who understand that action is important. So those are all components that um, I'm happy to speak to as we go through this. We've been around over 70 years. So um, we've been around a long time. Uh, we also have for our eighth graders automatic entry to our high school in Manhattan, which is almost impossible to get into um, in terms of the, you know, colleges talk about the yield, the number of applications to the number of, of people that they take. So we've actually been getting a number of students who come to our school for eighth grade uh, and make the commute from the city just so they can automatically go uh, to ninth grade. Why choose an international school? Well, because first of all, a global mindset is critical. Um, as we all know, the world is getting to be a smaller and smaller place. Academic excellence, you'll find that in lots of schools, but in an international school, our curriculum is imbued with an international flavor. And then you'll see that in the literature the kids read, you'll see it in the humanities the kids study, all of those things. Diversity for us is, is very important. Um, you're probably, most of you are living in Queens, if you're in, looking at Eunice. Queens is the most diverse borough in the United States. I'm sure many of you have read, there are more languages spoken in Queens than any other school, any other uh, borough in the country. So you can walk into any public school and find uh, kids from all over in, in Queens when, when you're in the borough. That doesn't make an international school. An international school has to do with your foundational values. It has to do with what you teach your children. It has to do with the, the kind of mindset you're looking to develop. Um, we talk in international education, and I'm just gonna, I don't wanna take, the, take so much of your time, so I'm gonna go through this a little bit quickly. Um, we talk about foods, flags, and festivals. And you walk into some schools and you talk about, you know, what do you do about multiculturalism and internationalism? And they say, oh, we have, you know, this wonderful international night and we have food from everywhere and people wear national dress. And we do that too, but that's really just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. That's not what makes an international school. You know, an international school is what you're teaching. Your, it, the, it's the philosophy behind what you teach your kids in every class that they go to. And it's about them understanding that the world is a smaller place. Technology has made the world a smaller place. Um, when you think about it, many of you may work or connect with people from other parts of the world every day in your daily life. And our kids deal with that. They're in class and they understand that, you know, all of our differences are what make us interesting and exciting and wonderful. And there are so many similarities that tie us together. So for our kids to deal with people from other places is just part of the DNA of who we are. How did it all begin? It began with UN parents who wanted an international education for their, their children. They began in Lake Success in 1947, moved to Parkway Village, which was where I began. If you know Queens, it's by Main Street and Utopia Parkway, uh, Union Turnpike. 
And then we moved in 1982 to our current location in Croydon Road. Um, we are a very diverse community. Our parents are international as well as a host country. Our students speak a variety of languages, nationalities, as does our faculty. Our campus is uh, from the outside. It looks small, but we pack a lot into our building. We have kindergarten through eighth grade. We have our gym, we have our art studio, and you'll see some of these things as we go through. We have an outdoor classroom and a green space outside where teachers can take classes when the weather is nice. We have a playground and we have a field that's next to the school. We have uh, a library, we have a kids sitting and you can see some of the COVID. These are pictures taken recently. You can see the kids have the, we have the screens on each desk. And I'll talk a little bit about kind of what we've done now with um, in this situation with um, COVID and safety because our elementary school has been open every day. That's our art studio. We have a kiln and kind of see it over in the back. That's our science lab. And I know that since people can't actually be in the building, it's kind of to give you a sense of how the school looks. Um, that's our gym and badminton has been a big sport because that's uh, something you can do socially distanced. What does the school day look like? Our, and just before kind of a, the, the UNIS nomenclature, um, we call our kindergarten junior A and then our junior school is grades one to four, junior one, two, three, and four. Our middle school, we call the middle one, middle two, middle three, middle four is five through eight. Basically parents can drop their children off at 745 and have supervision till we begin at 830. Our middle school does mindfulness in the morning, kind of puts everybody in the frame of mind. Um, and that's a variety of activities that we do. Um, and then they go to classrooms. We have two breaks per day plus lunch. So the kids have a break around lunchtime and a morning break. And then our kindergarten ends at, uh, junior school ends at 250 and middle school ends at three. Our activities are now virtual. Um, hopefully, maybe when September comes, we'll be able to go back to the regular after school activities. We'll see. And then we have aftercare for our working parents, which you can use on a regular basis, a drop in basis. It's a, a variety. Academics, basically, the UN mission is the foundation of the work that we do. We look at conceptual understanding when we look at units, we look at competency learning, which are skills and character development. And those things come together to form the core of our academic program. We also look at integrated learning because when kids can make connections, that's when they learn to think deeply. So for us, those kinds of things are really important. In our junior school, basically, we have differentiated literacy. Um, our K-1-2 in, in literacy is totally differentiated because we have students as an international school who come in reading and reading very well in kindergarten. And we have kids who've just gotten off a plane from someplace and don't speak a word of English. So um, we make sure that every one of those students get what they need where they are. We look at numeracy um, as something conceptual as well as procedural. Uh, kids can compute very quickly and then you can put the same numbers in a word problem and they get lost. So we really, we want kids to understand the way numbers work. We have integrated humanities and science from kindergarten, everybody takes French or Spanish. And then there's art, music, library, STEM, PE. When we're not in COVID times, we have swimming for our kids. We have a lot of social emotional learning activities that go on and we have ELL and student support. Our academics for middle school are what we call our MESH subjects, math, English, humanities, and science, French and Spanish, specialists, which include health and, and advisory and theater arts in middle school. Um, the languages, the kids take language from kindergarten. In seventh grade, they will pick up the other language. So if you've taken French from kindergarten on, when you get to seventh grade, you will take Spanish as well. Our fine arts are really important to us. Um, you know, the academics are the, are the core of what we do, but we also believe that, um, you know, the arts imbue the spirit and music and art are very, very important. My favorite, if you're looking at these pictures is the, the trees, there's the gold trees, but the trees on the right were done by kindergartners and they were done with broccoli. And when you see it in person, it's got such a beautiful texture, it's really gorgeous. The um, albatross on the top was done with our seventh graders. Uh, we had a paper sculpture come in. It's entirely made of paper and it was connected to the study of the rhyme of the ancient mariner. 
um, what you're seeing now is just we have our some chorus, some musicians. Um, the piece on the right comes from the second grade and a unit that we have called People Who Make a Difference. And the picture on the top is done in art, and it's what we call the they're the kids' quiet heroes, uh, kids who, who makes a difference in the life of that child. Could be a parent, a grandparent, a neighbor, a coach, um, a, a babysitter. Um, and then they look at who makes a difference, who's made a difference to the world at large. So this child has chosen Beethoven. Um, and it comes back around to the students understanding how can they make a difference? Because in the end, it has to come back to the learner. The IB learner profile I talked about before, when we talk about social emotional learning and we talk about the dispositions of a global citizen, those are the things that we look to develop and we take them very seriously. We use the language of the IB learner profile um, all the time in school when we're talking about, about learning. School is uh, a social place. You can see these are pre-COVID pictures, but basically that's why we felt it was important even six feet apart to get our kids back to school. So our kindergarten through fourth grade come every day. And then our fifth and sixth grade come four out of five days and then alternate days for seven and eight. When we're not in these um, dis socially distanced times when everyone has to be very, you know, kind of stay apart, we can't have parents in the building. We have lots of um, community events. May Day, you see the May poll there, UN Day, we, everybody, the kids wear national dress, they sing, they, we have fabulous luncheon that the parents do and uh, assemblies. So lots of activities. We've had to tone them down and shift them um, with COVID but we've managed to do some of those things. So what have we done with COVID since none of us are really sure what's gonna happen? Um, we went remote in March and through June last spring when this first began. And we worked literally every day in the summer to figure out how we were gonna open up. We came back with our junior school fully back in person five days a week and our middle school in a hybrid model alternating days and following winter break we were able to bring our fifth and sixth graders back four days a week. How do we manage it? Faculty gets tested weekly. After all of our breaks, our October break and our winter break, everyone gets tested, faculty, staff, and students. We have these big poly screens. So students whose parents choose to keep them remote can have them zoom into a class and they can see the whole classroom. Um, and the kids can see their classmates who are zooming in, uh, in at a good size, not in a small little square. Uh, we have individual supplies. Everybody has their own um, materials, whether it's art, whether it's music. We have ukuleles and xylophones and everything that you know the kids can use on their own so that we don't have to worry about um, any sharing, which is kind of sad because schools are about sharing, but not in these days. Um, we have everyone wears masks and social distancing and there's no visitors in the building. Um, this is, you can see in this picture, the poly screen and there are two, there's a picture of the classroom on, this, on the screen and the two students who are studying remotely. So you can see, they can see the whole room and they're a good size for their classmates to interact with them. Every desk has a um, plexi shield around it so that um, the students have that barrier. And as well, we keep the classes, especially the little ones as cohorts. So they stay primarily in their classrooms. So if we, had, if we would have had to contact Trace, we can do that fairly easily. Um, admissions, uh, kind of to wrap up, the applications are um, done through Ravenna and we require a school report. There will be an interview and admissions test, which will be done virtually now. If you're interested in applying for financial aid, there's an application that happens then. And we abide by all of the ASAGNI dates. So um, that's important for everybody to know that we can't give any information before. So I've talked fast and tried to get through a lot so that um, we have time for questions. And um, if you have any, uh, Francis, do you wanna field the questions? So I have a few parents just asking in the chat, um, is the online learning synchronous or asynchronous? The online learning, the kids come uh, zoom into the classroom. So that's a parent parental choice. So school is open, school is in session. If you are a parent who wants to keep your child remote, they zoom into the class with the teacher 
and it is going to be synchronous with the class. Um, we will ask the parents often, uh, depending on what's happening in the class, to stop by and pick up supplies. So for example, when the kids were doing work in art with clay, we had them um, take the, you know, come and pick up the clay so they could work with the alongside the class or they pick up their in, the instruments, they have, we, if, whether it's a ukulele or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, classes is in session. We don't send home, you know, things for parents to teach their kids. We have teachers who do that. And parents asking, what are the languages that Eunice offers? We offer French and Spanish from kindergarten. Um, we have actually one of the, the funny side benefits that we've had for, um, of co because of COVID is this virtual world has opened up for us the fact that our Manhattan campus, which has 1500 kids, they have five grades at each level. We have one. Um, we've been able to zoom into their language classes. So in seventh grade, when our kids um, normally take the other French or Spanish, if they have a different mother tongue, they can um, take that language virtually through uh, connect to the Manhattan class, which they would they would go into the class. So we have somebody taking Russian, somebody taking Japanese, and we had somebody taking German in the spring. The parent is asking, can we still apply for sixth grade? Are there any open seats at this point? And this at this moment for sixth grade, not, but um, there's always movement. So I would say, you know, apply and get on the list. Um, because if you're still interested when seventh grade comes that, you know, they'll, you want to be on the list there. That's the one grade that we have that's that's full. The other grades have um, have different spots based on the grade. There are different seats. And then they're asking, how does admission work for middle school? Is it different from the elementary school admission? No, the admission process is the same. You would fill out an application on Ravenna, and then you would um, submit a school report. And then Rebecca Sorrentini, who is our admissions director, will contact you. And then we would do um, a virtual uh, admission session. Either way, whether you're kindergarten or eighth grade would be the same. I mean, the um, testing obviously is different, but that process is the same. Parent is asking, what's the advantage of attending one campus versus the other campus, like Queens versus Manhattan? Are they both K to eight as well? It's, it's an interesting question. Um, obviously, my heart is in Queens, but um, the question is is an interesting one it's manhattan is a large campus it's 1500 kids um the advantage i think of queens especially if you have younger children is the size we yeah. know everybody in the campus we know you know um the every teacher knows everyone i think what happens is by the time they get to eighth grade they're ready for a bigger uh, you know, kind of to swim in a bigger pond. And then it's, it's a great thing. The other thing, you know, for us um, is that because it's small, the parent community is really wonderful and supportive and they get to know each other as well. But in terms of the program, the curriculum is the same. So it's not as if you, if you go to Manhattan, you have a different math program or a different history program, uh, humanities program, the program is the same. And do you provide busing to Eunice? We have buses if you are in Forest Hills, Kew Gardens, um, different, it, we have three bus routes within five miles of the school. Our biggest contingent of people are from Forest Hills. So that's the largest bus route. If you live outside that, there are some private van services. We have students who come from as far as Long Island City. We actually have students from Manhattan, as I say, who join our eighth grade in order to get into our high school. And we do have Long Island people who come as well and they get door to door service through their school district. And then just going through this, um, if you're a middle school student at Eunice, do you still have to reapply for high school admission? No, and that's one of the um, advantages, I think, for why people are applying for eighth grade. I think it's kind of a strategy that's proven to be successful for them, is that um, basically it, for us, ninth grade is just the next grade for our kids. So you just re-register the way you would every year. But for um, parents looking to get into the high school, 
Um, if you know the high school, it's the IBDP program, which is an incredible credential for college. Um, it's very rigorous. It involves uh, the theory of knowledge course. It involves an extended essay. Um, so it's really a, a great program. And it, it, the, the, as I say, the admission numbers, it's very difficult to get in. So we do have people who make the transport the other way. They bring their child from Manhattan for seventh and eighth grade or eighth grade, and then they have automatic admission to the high school. That's so extremely helpful to know. Can you share some of the high school acceptance rates with us? Just assuming kids don't go to Eunice for high school, what are some kids apply to? Yeah, um, about half of our eighth grade will go to Manhattan. The other half um, tend to go to Townsend Harris is the biggest draw because it's in Queens. Bronx Science, Stuyvesant, Bard, some of the kids who are into art or music will go to LaGuardia. Um, I think because of, especially last year with COVID, we had students who turned down Bronx Science and Stuyvesant to go to Townsend Harris. So out of our um, 19 graduates, we had six go to Townsend Harris. So I think that because of the travel, uh, you know, people felt more comfortable, but that's probably, those are probably the main schools. They tend to go, very few um, students ever go to a different private school. They pretty much, if they're staying private, they go stay at Eunice. Um, and we do every once in a while, get a student to apply to the parochial schools, especially Malloy, because the kids tend to do really well on the tax and there's a scholarship. Um, if you get a certain score at, at Malloy. So that tends to be a big draw. So I don't see any more questions right now, but I, I do wanna take a moment to just let the parents know, and this is being recorded. So we get to go through that as well. Something that I've observed, and it's a compliment to Eunice, and it's a compliment to the school. Something I've observed is kids will leave Eunice, they go to Townsend Harris High School, for instance, they're just extremely well adjusted to Townsend Harris. And you almost have to wonder because Eunice is not, well, you know, I'm very into test prep. <laughs> Eunice, Eunice, <laughs> Eunice will do, you know, it's called Queller test prep. So it's fascinating because we have kids, uh, I, I don't want to name names right now because of the recording, but we have kids where they just adjust extremely well from Eunice to Hunter High School, Townsend Harris, Bronx Science. And it's really remarkable because somehow this holistic approach at Eunice and the map testing, um, which if you could touch on that, that would be really good for parents to know. Because um, let's just say we definitely have a test prep audience uh, at Queller. It, it's yeah. just... It's it's remarkable that, what do you think is the secret sauce to your school? Because <laughs> the kids are happy and I visited a number of times and they're just overall just very well rounded. And it's really remarkable because they're, then they enter these really, really rigorous environments and they perform. So what's the secret? What's <laughs> going on? Well, thank you. I mean, thank you. That's really nice for you to say. Um, I think there's a couple of things. Um, and I'm a data person. I mean, I was a math teacher. So test prep, all of those things, you know, and I tell the kids, if you're taking the SHSAT, you should be, you should prep. I mean, that's what you should do. Get yourself in the best possible position for those kind of things when you're taking those tests. Um, I think it's a couple of things. I think one of the things I believe, and I think it's, it's not me, it's the culture of the school, is kids learn best when they are happy. So I think it's a joyful place. I really do. You walk in and you feel it. Uh, the kids want to come to school. The parents told us that, you know, when we did the hybrid piece, that they want to come, on, even on their days off, they, they want to come. But I think kids learn best when, when they're happy and comfortable. But I think the bottom line to it is that we're, our commitment is about learning. And learning, you know, when you um, get kids to understand, you know, what, when they're doing engaging things and they're learning, that carries through. And that's really the, the bottom line. Um, you know, there's a, there's a kind of a funny little um, cartoon that I've used at, with, at different teacher meetings. And it's a little boy with a dog. And um, the boy said, and he's standing with his friend. And he says, I taught my dog to whistle. 
And the friend says, well, I don't hear him whistling. And the boy says, well, I taught him. He just didn't learn it. Um, and that's, to me, you know, people talk a lot about what do you teach, what do you teach? It's not about that. It's about what are the kids learning? You know, can you look at that learning? Can you, can you see the change? Can you get them to, you know, to think, to, to be critical thinkers, to be problem solvers, to be, those are skills that they take with them everywhere, whether they go to Townsend or Bronx Science or to Eunice or, so it's really, I think the school is very learner centered. And it, in part, the other piece is the UN, the third thing is the, the mission and the, the IB learner profile dispositions, you know, that um, you have to be respectful. You have to um, be, you know, considerate of other people. You have to, I, we don't have um, issues in, in this, the way that people talk about, you know, like bullying and do kids argue on the playground when they play four square that somebody is out and they say they're not out. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kids stuff and you, you teach kids how to navigate that. But um, I think there's, it really is an understanding. I, I say to the kids all the time in school, everybody in this building is as important as everybody else. And they get it, um, they, they do. Um, the other thing for me, and it's just for me, and I say this all the time, I'm a mom before I'm anything else. I mean, I've been in the school a long time, but you know, I think our perspective is, you know, we treat these kids as well, like they're our own, because, uh, you know, we are a small place and we, we know all of the kids, we know all of the families and it, it matters. So the kids know that what they do is important, that it's valued by everybody. Um, you know, and, and it makes a difference. But I, I will talk about map testing since you mentioned map testing. We don't do the citywide tests or the state tests as a private school. We are exempt from that. And by being exempt from that, we can leave the test prep to Queller for all the important tests. And we can concentrate on the learning, on the kinds of projects and the kinds of things that get kids get can sink their teeth into and, and enjoy. Um, so we have that, that possibility, but we do want to it's, have some measure because it's one thing for us to say our kids do really well. We think our kids do really well and they do really well on what we give them. But if we never give them something that's external, it's really us just evaluating them based on our own things. So we decided a few years back that we would do NWEA map testing. So we haven't done it with COVID because this has been a, a challenging uh, semester for everybody, but um, we will, we usually do it. I expect we will go back to it. We do it in October and we do it in May. So we can see growth, we can measure growth. So the kids all take the test. And what's great about it is it's an adaptive test. So we don't have to worry to, two children sitting next to each other. They're gonna get different questions. And as one gets them correct, the questions will keep getting more difficult. If somebody gets a question wrong, the question goes back to a different level so that you're able to, to have this adaptive test and really get a read on what the kids um, understand. And that helps to inform what they need to do um, during the school year. And then we test again in May to see um, progress and the kids actually do really well on it. But it's still, I think as a, as a data person, I think it's important to have some kind of external measure. Oh, I think you're muted. Oh, sorry. The parents have a few more questions. I'm gonna go through them. Sure. So parents asking, do you require the ISEE, the IC entrance test for sixth grade or for any middle school entrance? Is there an exam to enter your school? There is not a standardized exam like that. Um, as I say, we're a small school and we do our own interview and that's it. We don't do any external interview. Everything happens in-house. And then uh, someone, one of the parents is asking, I heard that you take the kids on international trips. So what are some of the trips? And again, we're assuming we're all going back to normal. Yes. When we so can get on a plane again, um, our fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, all go to local trips. They all do, aside from the regular school trips, they do camp. So our fourth grade goes to um, Camp Greenkill, um, they go to Club Getaway in grade seven. They did Camp Mason. 
Um, the international trips are over spring break and they're done through the high school, but our seventh, our eighth grade, and we were just talking about it today actually at a meeting, um, our eighth grade, if you've studied French all through, you go to Quebec. And if you've studied Spanish, you will go to either Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, some kind of a language immersion trip. Um, we have done in the past Nice, we've done Alicante in Spain, um, you know, a, a whole bunch of different places. Um, but the travel usually depends th that particular year because it is covered by the school on the cost and pl plane fare, those kind of things. But that's an eighth grade trip. It happens in May of every year. That's so great. So the kids are getting the international component. So am I understanding correctly, all students by the end of eighth grade, we'll have two languages. Okay. So they'll have, well, obviously English, but they're going to have two languages. So a total of three where they're in class learning a second and a third language. Yeah, they will have um, French and Spanish, one they've taken from whenever they've entered and the second one they'll begin in grade seven and they'll have two years of. And what happens is because they have the other language and they're kind of, they're, there's so many connections, um, they wind up picking it up pretty quickly. The second, the third, what would be English in the IB um, program, it's the your language of instruction is considered your language A, then you have a second language and the third language. So this was extraordinarily informative. And I want to thank you so much for just, you know, hosting the webinar. And, um, I, you know, truth be told, it's really impressive that you're the principal and the head of the school and you are the one hosting the webinar tonight. It's a really just honor that you are able to do this and you're willing to be the person to speak about the school and you're the one who's interacting day to day. It really speaks volumes. I absolutely want to share how impressive, how well adjusted and how uh, just kind of aware of the world the students at Eunice are and you can almost tell that they go to Eunice. <laughs> I'm very impressed with how well they adapt to really hard exams uh, knowing that you know they're in a more holistic environment it's very nurturing uh, as opposed to you know I'll see the public school students and they're you know they're more test prep ready but it's very interesting that Eunice kids will adapt so fast to that environment. So I see that, I see that all the time. Um, yeah. I really just wanna you know, give you a very, very sincere thank you for this time, this opportunity. And um, I do wanna you know, just share uh, you know, visually, aesthetically, the school location is so nice. So it's in a part of Queens known as Jamaica Estates. It's, it's kind of suburban. It's a very suburban feel. Um, it's it, the actual Eunice school itself is closed. It's gated. It's very secure. There is a full-time security personnel, correct? Yes. So you can, there's even, a full-time guard and there's a, a duty policeman as well. So we have um, security at the, at the gate. It's a, you know, kind of a sad state for us all to have to have that at a school, but we do, you know, safety is important. I, I love it. So, I mean, we also have a full-time security person at Queller, um, yeah. much more full-time than I originally thought it would be, but um, so, and uh, we, we do. And so you, you do have, so you have an off-duty police officer, you have a duty, we have a duty police officer who's got, you know, his, all his uh, police equipment. And I mean, he does have a gun and, you know, his the things, yeah. but, you know, it's just, we have a security guard for safety as well, but you know, knock wood, everything's been good. And, you know, but you just never know in this day and age, you know, unfortunately. So safety, just like with COVID, you know, safety is the most critical, you know, it's the first thing. If everybody isn't safe, nobody can learn. So that's really critical to, it's really fundamental. To I mean, I'm fully supportive of that. And, and we, we've also gone that route as a tutoring center. So I, not only support it, I've actually mimicked that. And uh, let, let's just say we've stepped it up as well uh, with, uh, with our company's growth. So that's amazing. And I do wanna share with the parents, you should know it's a very safe school. It's gated, it's closed. You cannot enter the school building without getting a clearance check. You have to show ID when you enter. I mean, I'm just speaking my own personal experience.
of, you know, just even dropping off some brochures. I, it just, it's a very, very safe, secure. There are several la- layers prior to entry that no one can just walk right in. So keep that in mind. Also, neighborhood wise, you're, you're in a part of Queens that's very suburban feel. So you are going to get kind of that zen, that calm experience. There's no hustle, bustle. Um, you'll, you'll feel it. You'll feel a calm of entering that neighborhood and that environment. So I do want to share that as well. I see one of the parents has a question. I just want to take a look. Sure. Um, in terms of the application, is that for just Queens, just Manhattan? Is the application one for both schools or how does that work? It's one application and you indicate on the top of the application which campus. So you, if you want, you apply to one campus or the other and you would check that off at the top, but the application itself looks the same, whether it's Manhattan or Queens, it's the same application. And that's all done through Ravenna. That's so great. So, so theoretically, can a parent, a parent is asking, theoretically, can a parent apply to both campuses at once? Technically, no, because obviously we're one school, so we talk to each other. Um, So we would be saying, you know, gee, we have this student. Are they looking for a seat in your campus or our campus? Um, And sometimes it depends if if people are looking at Manhattan and there isn't a seat there or vice versa. Um, we would we do recommend the other campus, but you cannot apply to both campuses at the same time. And again, um, parents, so let's, I guess, stop with questions at this point. Um, I just want to, because I do want to close up and say thank you for this time. If parents, if you could just give a beautiful thank you to Ms. Barbara Kennedy for being the headmaster, the principal, the, the person leading tonight's webinar, just huge, huge thank you. So parents, please feel free to type that in. And um, I, I really sincerely want to share that this has been very informative for me. I, the idea of a child learning three languages, you know, by the end of eighth grade and just being exposed to international travel and to be in a safe, secure environment as a parent, you can't put a price on that. Um, Eunice has exceeded a lot of expectations for many families. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to speak to, you know, just to have you representing the school. And I do want to share parents and those of you who are going to watch the video right now, we uh, kind of have a I guess, jack in the box with the public school system. We just don't know what we're getting. And it's just, it's been unnecessarily politicized right now with the schools and there will be an exam and there won't be an exam. And it's just a lot of, I refer to it as a yo-yo on my distribution list of 10,000 families. Um, I've been extremely outspoken and opposed to just all the chaos going on with the public schools right now. So there's an opportunity to explore private schools. Keep in mind that Eunice also has a financial aid package. Is that correct? They yes, do. Yeah. If you we have a fine, I'm sorry to interrupt. I can just. Mm-hmm. It's, um, we have financial aid. When you fill out the Ravenna application, you can indicate you'd like an application for financial aid. It's absolutely, you know, between the business office and the parent. It's uh, it has nothing to do with your acceptance or non-acceptance, totally separate. And um, it's up to 40% is the, is the maximum financial aid award. And it's done um, through the financial aid application. So theoretically, you know, those parents who have brothers and sisters and, uh, you know, just more than one sibling and they would like to enroll, there are options for, you know, just tuition reductions, financial aid. There's financial aid available, right? People would apply for financial aid. Absolutely. And families, just please keep that in mind um, as an option. And just don't forget that, you know, private schools, especially a private school such as Eunice, it's, the opportunities are just incredible. So please share that. Um, something that I really, really would like to do, parents, if we could all say thank you, I'm going to take the parents off mute just so that we could all nicely say thank you so much. Oh, you're, you're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck Thank with your you searches. So much. You're quite welcome. Good luck with your searches. Like I say, I'm a mom before I'm anything else. So, you know, um, your children are the most precious things in the world. And these decisions about where to send them to school are, are you know, critical. So I wish you all the very best. 
Thank you so much. I, I want to say thank you myself. I learned a lot. And it's so nice to have the school as an option in Queens. It's, it's just, it's, it's really refreshing. And thank you. Thank you for this amazing time. It was really nice to virtually. Yeah. <laughs> to see. Yeah. Um, Take thank care. You. Have, have a good night. Okay. Oh. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank bye. you.